So what's happening today? Today is pre-production for this video Jake wants to shoot tomorrow, which means that we're shooting it in here, therefore we have to move all the desks somewhere else, which is really annoying, because I like my desk where it is. Wait, that desk is going to I didn't say it was mine. I've just- I Gotcha! I... <gasps> yeah! Oh! Two, three, four, seven. You and your suction cup hands. Oh, well, you got a few more to go, honey. <laughs> Got me. Now we're even. <laughs> Sneaky habitses. Dude, check this out. This is the printer. Look how small this thing is. This is the spool of plastic. It feeds into this, it melts here, and then squirts out and makes little uh, little things. The, uh, no, that's an M. It's not an M. It's more of an M than an E. I mean, I, 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 I disagree. <laughs> Have you seen Tesla Model 3? <laughs> the movie Me? Mission Impossible 3? <laughs> yeah, it's an M. It stands for monoprice. The MP. Nico, hey! I left set just so I can see your printer. <laughs> <laughs> this is the monoprice select mini. This is not the EAP, that's an M. You just confirmed it, you said it! So if you don't know much about 3D printers, you have some videos to watch from our previous year. This thing is $200. This is as cheap as like an inkjet printer you get at Best Buy. Consumer level pricing for 3D printing and so I was like, I have to have one. I always knew someday I'd get into 3D printing myself with my own personal printer and the day has finally come and this is it. Now wait till it prints a new run to do all the effects for you and takes your money and your wife and your dog. That's okay. I have done nothing with it. I literally pulled it out of a box, plugged it in, put the SD card in, and started printing. So what it does is it takes a thousand cross sections of a 3D model and lays that down. Here's a Yoda. This is the second thing I printed and it printed flawlessly. Mwah. This thing has been going non-stop since I got it Sunday night. Basically every night while I sleep it prints and then every day while I'm here at the studio it prints and then I come back home, rinse and repeat. This is an elliptical gear. There is no central axis to this and they're not round, but yet they're still operating like a normal gear. This is probably the coolest thing I've printed so far. It looks like a bunch of cubes. You can't get too close and you have to be straight on. If I turn it on its side, it's all in your head. Nico, there's a couple like Kind of big name actors in this show. Those girls who are in those other big shows and stuff? I don't know if I can oh, say the their names. Oh, the actors from the show. The actors from the show. Like, yeah, yeah. famous people. What's it like working with someone who's like, I've been in a lot of stuff that you've seen me in, but we need to be professional. How do you be professional when you want to geek out? I, I don't geek out. Because <laughs> it's my job to like actually make sure they're doing what I need them to do and delivering the proper story beats that we need to get but they're also very good at it, so I basically just let them walk on set. I go, can I see it? And they do the scene, I'm like, that's pretty cool. And that's about the extent of what I do. <laughs> is that like really... I mean, that, I'm not surprised by that. Mostly all I do is tell them when to change it up. Cool, you got it, we nailed it. Let's see something funky now, try this. Like, what, what's like the biggest difference between like a good, like expensive actor versus a non-good actor? <laughs> a good actor knows all the things that happen around acting. Blocking, the makeup, your costumes, how to have your lines prepped, the flow of a set. I line the camera so if I'm talking to somebody and they like lean over, I know to move over so that I can still be seen by the camera. Finding your light so that if there's a shadow, you move so that you're back in your light. We are shooting <laughs> six pages a day, and at that speed, we can only do about three takes. The takes need to be good from the first take. We'll do some rehearsals beforehand before the cameras roll. But once the cameras start rolling, the person needs to be on and in character, not screwing up their lines. Good enough to roll back and like hit the line again if something funky happens, like a plane flies by or something. So good actors just make you work fast. Most of my direction on set is honestly just pushing people to just get into the emotions a little bit more. It's hard to commit to painful emotions if you're doing a sad scene, you know? And they'll do a good job getting into it at a base level, and sometimes it's just, uh, it's like, no, go a little harder. Delve a little bit deeper into your internal sorrows, you know? Kind of like, you're, you're on the right track. You're yeah. Doing, you're doing what you're supposed to do, but mm -hmm. you're not hitting it. Keep going. Yep. If you put a light in here, it'll project light out as squares on the ground around it. I believe in you, right? You did it. Look at this! A $200 printer printed this! And it's, for all intents and purposes, flawless, if you don't count all the flaws. Let's see if my phone light will work. Hey! Actually, holy crap! That works really well! Look at these square lights! I've made square light! 
dude. It's important to note that I haven't actually modeled any of these things myself. I've literally been downloading them from a website called Thingiverse. What, what, what would you even call it? Everyone can just kind of user submit their own. A universe of things. <laughs> Like all these models are just like free models that you can download. People have just donated them to this website. Here's this like baby group and I loaded it up in this program called Cura. You have a program that you model stuff in, but then you need another program or a plugin that can take that model and make it ready for printing. Uh, support structures and putting it in the right format for the printer to read. It's gonna print the head and the body of baby group separately. No. no. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna set this up right here. Plug that in, take this. This is not a sponsor, like, at all. This is actually something I'm really, really interested in. This is, this is like, really cool. Eep. So once this heats up to 210 degrees, it's gonna start laying a bed of plastic, and that's called a raft. Baby Groot will literally just sit on that. Little baby This, this is the first little bit. Groot Root. <laughs> Groot Root! <laughs> Groot Root! Yeah, so this should uh, take maybe three hours. We'll come back in three hours. Cue the time lapse. I mean, I basically have three sets of directing that I approach. I have my directing for the actor, which is the decisions they're making as a character, the important emotional beats. Like, you might be saying thank you, but what you really mean inside is fuck you. So, like, subtext. Yeah, subtext. Important. You know, things like that. A good actor already has all the stuff prepped. The other directing I need to do is for the crew and the camera. Just saying, okay, I need this set decorated like this. I'm looking for this kind of temperature on the lights. Props in the background need to be here. Let's put the camera over here. So basically all the crew direction. The first AD's responsibility is? It's his responsibility but I communicate through him. Most of the time you talk to the AD, you don't actually talk to the gaffers and the, the prop positioners specifically. I'll be like, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for this, and then he's the guy who then goes and makes it happen. When it comes to camera team, I talk to the director of photography, he talks to the camera team. So I talk to Adrian, he talks to the camera team, and the lighting team, and the grip team. And my third and final level of direction is audience direction. At the beginning of the scene, I want people to think everything's fine and dandy, and by the end of the scene, I want the audience to realize that there's a much bigger problem that no one has realized. So then I need to make sure that my whole scene plays into that story direction or the audience direction, what, what the audience is going to take away. And sometimes I'll share that with the actors and be like, I want the audience to take away from the scene that you guys truly love each other, and that you really want you to focus on making each other laugh, looking into each other's <coughs> eyes, smiling, like all that kind of stuff, you know? So that's my direction for the audience, and I'll share that with people as I need to. Hmm. I don't know, I have no idea. I've never dealt with foggers before. The fogger we used before is yours. Wait, Google what? The, the fogger we used before was mine? Gotcha. No! Mom. <laughs> That's twice in one day! Oh, he got you? <laughs> Alright, so it's done. It took an hour and 49 minutes. Little baby beer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just peel it off the bed with my fingertips. There we go. Oh, look, he's got strings sticking out of his eye. I literally yeah. have to the size. Way smaller of a print bed, a little bit of a slower print time, but for the freaking price. Regardless of price, I feel like this is a pretty good quality print. I wish our printer was working so I could print something and we could literally and compare, compare it. it. <laughs> but the problem is my printer won't finish, so there's no comparison to be made. Dude, moment of truth, gonna put the head on. Oh, it's got like a little groove in there to make sure it goes in at the right angle. A Groot groove. <laughs> look at that, little baby Groot. An hour and a half print on the printer that <gasps> I tried it on. Just break it I just you? broke it! I go like... <laughs> but like, do the whole like, Terminator thing. <laughs> okay, here's the number. It's broke. No!